and today I'm going to show you exactly and in detail, I'm going to demonstrate and explain what a voltage divider is. We're going to be doing things such as drawing a circuit diagram, building the circuit of a voltage divider, using light dependent resistors, thermistors, potentiometers. We also show you guys what a potentiometer is and the difference between linear potentiometers and logarithmic potentiometers and why you might want to use the different ones. Finally, before we get on with this video, I do realise this is a very jam-packed video, so if you wanted to split it up and watch it in chunks, then that'll be a good idea, um, and come back and watch bits of it later. Also, if you wanted to whiz ahead and didn't want to watch the whole thing, in the description box down below, I should have le leave left bookmarks and like pointers, so you can whiz ahead to certain points of the video. Um, so I really hope you stick around and enjoy this video. I'm going to demonstrate and explain how a potential divider works. It's also known as a voltage divider. I'm going to be using a breadboard and if you are unfamiliar with what they are or how they work then I've done a video for complete beginners showing you how they work and what they are. So if you don't know go check that out. I'm also going to be using some battery clips. So these are just some ones that you can buy but if you don't want to buy any I made this one myself and I've done a video showing you guys how I made it so if you wanted to make one now then go check that out. I'm also going to be using a multimeter to measure the voltage and this is connected directly into my breadboard with these little devices here and I mean I guess they're self-evident how they work but I've done a video showing you guys how I made them anyway so if you wanted to check that out then feel free to. I've drawn the circuit diagram here and you can see we have the power source and in this case it's just this battery and then I have uh, one resistor here and that's this resistor here. And then I've got another one connected in series, and that is just this second resistor here. So these two are connected in series. I also have a voltmeter. It says a voltmeter, but I'm using my multimeter. And that is connected here and here on either side of this resistor. And you can see that is represented in my diagram here. Also, these are 1K resistors, and these are just the resistors I used 1K. Finally, also, hopefully you can see that the voltage I've measured is 3.1, sorry, 3.68, so I'll just pop that down here. 3.68. Now we've measured the voltage across resistor 2, and we're now going to measure the voltage across resistor 1, and you might want to guess what that voltage is going to be. So I'm going to do that by measuring the voltage from here and here. This is on the same row as this leg of the, um, of the, that I lied. It's on the, now it's on the same row as that um, resistor. And we can measure the voltage now. It's 3.68 volts. So I write that down here, 3.68 volts. And hopefully you guys got that correctly. I'm now going to measure the voltage around the power source. And you may want to predict what that's going to be. Sorry, my hands are very shaky. So I have the voltage, and this little P is just the, it's very messy, the power just means the voltage of the power source. And so I'm going to just do that now. So we're taking it from here and here. Sorry, there we go. And that is... 7.34 and if you predicted that right then well done 7.34 volts so if we add these up we have 7.36 which is very close to 7.34 volts which is the total what a potential divider or voltage divider does and what we've just demonstrated is it takes the input voltage which in our case was 7.34 and I've just popped that down here so 7.34 volts it takes that and it splits it or divides it between the two resistors resistor 1 and resistor 2 and we measured the voltage across resistor 1 V1 which is voltage 1 and that was 3.68 volts and then we did the same earlier um, measured the voltage V2 across resistor 2 and that was again 3.68 volts and you guys will probably have guessed if you add those two together we should have got the input original voltage which was 7.34 volts but we didn't we got 3 point, sorry, 7.36 volts which is about two hundredths out 
and that will just be probably because of some inaccuracies in our measurements or maybe the multimeter and also this this battery won't be pumping out the same voltage um, all the time I mean it's originally a 9 volt battery and it is 7.34 volts so there'll be some inaccuracies there but the difference is negligible now why has our potential divider divided our input voltage perfectly by 2 so we've got 3.68 volts here and the same here well you're probably way ahead of me already but this is just because the resistors are the same well what's the point of a potential divider well if for example you wanted a certain voltage at v2 and you knew what the input voltage was then you could pick a resistor for r1 and a resistor for r2 and get the exact voltage that you wanted so let's say for example you did want 3.68 volts at v2 then you could just use the 1k resistor here and the 1k resistor here the maths i was going to leave this out but it is really straightforward and really simple but i understand if you don't want to do that so you can just fast forward if you like so the v2 which is what we have here that is equal to the source voltage times by what you've picked for r2 which is here divided all that divided by resistor 1 and resistor 2 let's do our example which is fairly simple so v2 is equal to the source voltage which in our case was 7.34 volts 7.34 times by r2 which is 1k which is 1000 1000 ohms divided by r1 add r2 which is 1k add 1k 1000 add 1000 sorry and that is 2000 and then we can just cancel those two zeros sorry thousands out and that is equal to 3.67 and then we can do volts which is close to what we got here and it's what we should have got but of course our measurements were a bit off i've just substituted out r2 it was 1k but now i've substituted it out for a 560 ohm resistor and i've just popped it in there just before i fit recorded because it is quite fiddly and i'm measuring it because i know it won't be exactly accurate and it's actually 554 ohms which is a little bit different to the 560 so i'm going to use that in our in as our value let's use a more interesting example with our 560 resistor sorry ohm resistor so we have the V2, sorry that looks a bit like a Z, um, the source voltage is obviously again 700, sorry 7.34 and then we times that by the new value for R2 which remember is 554, so I'll do 554, sorry, and then we divide it of course by resistor 1 add resistor 2 which is 1000 add our new resistor which is 554 which is 1554 so I'm going to do that on our calculator so that is 7.34 times by 554 okay and then we're going to divide that by 1554 and that gives us 2.61 so I'll just pop that in there 0.61 and if we measure it the voltage now oh sorry if we just plug in our battery i forgot to plug in the battery that's silly of me now we can measure the voltage and that is 2.63 which is close to 2.61 oh it's changing a bit 2.62 now i wonder if it's going to go down maybe oh of course we forgot to round it we forgot to round it that's so stupid i rounded it wrong I'm making some Bluetooth headphones and for that I'm using this cheap Bluetooth module and there'll be a video on how I made that if any of you guys are interested. This Bluetooth module requires between 3.7 volts and 5 volts and this battery is going to provide 7.34 volts which is too much but our potential divider will get us close to 3.7 which is what we need. So we might be tempted to use this to solve our problem but that will be a very bad idea. The variety of reasons, I'm not going to go through them all, but one is just because it's very inefficient. Take this resistor here for example, it's a very big waste of energy and it might get hot. 
Another reason is as soon as you have your circuit that you want to drive with your potential divider connected up, then that circuit will have resistance, and so you'll have essentially two resistors in parallel, like here. And two resistors in parallel reduces the overall resistance. So if this is smaller and this is smaller, then of course your voltage is going to be smaller, which is not what you want. In short, it's not a very good idea to use a potential divider to drive a circuit. I'm just going to show you guys what happens when we use our potential divider to drive our Bluetooth module with um, the voltage at V2. So at the moment we have about a stable voltage of about 3.65 volts. And remember we're expecting this to drop since the resistance in parallel reduces the resistance and will reduce the voltage. So if we connect our Bluetooth module up um, here and here then you can see that our voltage has dropped and that isn't enough to power our Bluetooth module hence why the little blue light isn't on. And then when we unplug it you can see the voltage goes back up. I have replaced our original resistor with this component here and this is a light dependent resistor also known as a photoresistor and it's also shortened to LDR and this is the sign here and at the moment it is at 6 kiloohms and if I shine a light on it it should go down in resistance so that's gone down to 0 0.4, 0 0.3 um, kiloohms and then if I take it off and then cover it it goes up in resistance so that's about 12, 13, 14. And this is what a light dependent resistor does. It changes changes resistance depending on the light. I've plugged in my battery here and we have the we have our potential divider here which is the same circuit as before except for the fact that this resistor varies depending on the light. So this is the circuit here and it's you can see it's exactly the same as this just with our our LDR resistor. And I've also changed our multimeter to volts so we can measure the voltage. I'll demonstrate how the voltage now changes. So if I shine a light on it, the voltage should go down. You can see it going down a bit here. Let's see. Oh, it's wrong. There we go. And then when I take it off, the voltage should increase. I'll just quickly demonstrate this. So at, if I cover our LDR up, we can see that the voltage increases. It's getting close to um, 7.4, which if you remember from earlier, is the maximum voltage. And if I take it away, you can hopefully see it's decreasing, the voltages. And if I shine a torch on it, let's see, we can try and get it under three volts. Let's see if we can get, there we go. Oh, it's, it's getting lower. Oh, it's going. So we're using a potential divider to vary the voltage. This is an Arduino and it's a microcontroller board and you can make all sorts of cool stuff with it. This is an egg bot that we made and you just put an egg in here and a pen in here and then it draws some cool stuff on the egg and we've done a video on that. But this is controlled by an Arduino here um, like this board. You can plug sensors into this board like an LDR. These Arduino boards, well it doesn't have to be an Arduino, there are other ones out there, but if you have something similar to this, these can measure voltage, but they can't measure resistance change. So if you had a sensor such as an LDR, which changes resistance due to light, or a thermistor, which changes resistance due to temperature, then you could use a potential divider to convert that resistance change into voltage change, which your Arduino can sense and pick up. Then you can build some really useful projects. I'm now going to be using my Arduino to power my circuit instead of my battery. So I'm going to start off by unplugging the positive and negative of my battery and replacing that with the positive of the Arduino and the ground of the Arduino. This lead is connected to a pin in my Arduino that can detect voltage changes. And I'm going to plug that in just here, which is right next to where, well, it's actually where my multimeter is plugged into. And on the diagram, that is about here. I've programmed my Arduino to display the voltage on my OLED display here. And you can see that my multimeter and our little screen here broadly agree. We're talking 4.16, 4.06, so about a tenth difference. Let's test it. At the moment we're reading about 4 volts, so if I shine our torch on our LDR, 
you can see that that's dropped quite a lot. So the voltage is about 0.8. Let's see if we can get it below. Yeah, 0.4, that's dropped dramatically. And so if we take it away, you can see it's gone back up to 4 volts. So the change of resistance of my LDR when I shine the torch on and take it off can't be detected by our Arduino. But with the use of our potential divider, we can change that into a change of voltage. And that is something that our Arduino can pick up. And once we have that value, we can grab it with our code and we can use that for something useful. I mean, at the moment, we're just displaying it on our, on our little blue OLED screen, but you can do something much more useful. You can use it in a project or something. I've programmed this yellow wire to turn off when the voltage detected at this purple wire, remember this is coming from our potential divider, when the voltage detected at this purple wire drops below 3 volts. So when I bring the light onto our light dependent resistance resistor and the resistance drops, the voltage will drop. So if I bring the light on, hopefully when it drops below 3 volts the light will turn off. Sorry, the LED will turn off. So let's see if we, we're dropping. It's 3.6. 3.1, under 2, and of course, hopefully you can see that the light LED has gone off. So when we bring it back, and it goes over 3 volts, the light turns back on. Hopefully this illustrates a practical use of a potential divider. I've swapped out our light dependent resistor with a thermistor, and this just changes its resistance depending on temperature. And here is the standard circuit symbol for a thermistor. We're going to do the same thing before that we did with light, but this time with temperature. The resistance of our thermistor at this current temperature was huge compared to our light dependent resistor. Our Arduino is supplying 5 volts, and so if this resistor was 1K and this resistor was 1K, then there'd be 2.5 volts here and 2.5 volts here. I've got a 1K resistor in at the moment, but the resistance of the thermistor is absolutely enormous and it's completely dwarfing the 1K resistor. So almost all of the voltage is coming across this resistor. We've swapped out our 1K resistor for a 22K resistor. And we know that if this was 22K and this was 22K, then our voltage here would be supplying 2.5, since they'd have to be shared out equally. But since this is over 2.5, we know that the thermistor at the moment, the resistance has to be over 22K, which is within the range that we need at the moment. Our weapon of choice. You may not hear me over the hairdryer, so I'll just tell you now, but as soon as we heat this up enough that the voltage drops below 3 volts, then the LED should turn off. Let's give it a go. See the voltage dropping down and it's below 3 volts and the LED is turned off. Couldn't turn it off. And we're going to cool it down with our fan and hopefully you can see that the voltage is rising and as soon as it's above 3 volts, it shall turn on. Just for fun, I want to see if I can get this voltage really low and then see if I can get it back up again. So we'll give it a go. Okay, it's dropping. Oh, it's going to go quite fast. got quite low and now I'm gonna cool it up with our fan. Oh you can see the voltage increasing quite a lot actually and I could do something to evaporate off it that would work as well but I don't want to short the circuit. It's still going. Come on. Still going come on. Um, Yay! On my guitar here I have three potentiometers, some people call them pots for short, and this one in particular um, adjusts the volume, so if I play something, I can turn it up, I can turn it all the way back down, and I can turn it up again, and then in the middle. This is typically what a potentiometer looks like, um, and this is what would have been in my guitar, and it would have had one of these little dials on. And there are different types of these, and this is the, but this is the most common. But they also come like this. You can see this plastic one has a little dial here. Potentiometers have three legs. This is the standard circuit symbol for a potentiometer. Let's say we have a 1K potentiometer, which is a thousand ohms. This is usually the middle leg of the potentiometer, 
and the resistance between these two outside legs, if this is a 1k potentiometer, which is 1000 ohms, will be 1000 ohms, and that never changes. If we adjust our potentiometer one way, then the resistance between this leg and this leg will decrease, and the resistance between these two legs would increase. And then vice versa, so if you adjusted the potentiometer and the other way, then the resistance between these two legs would increase, and then the resistance between these two would decrease. And the resistance between these two legs and these two legs would add up to 1k or 1000 ohms if this was a 1k potentiometer. So if this was the resistance between these two legs was 200 ohms, then you'd expect the resistance between these two legs to be 800 ohms. We're going to build this circuit now, which is a potential divider using a potentiometer. Let's compare the two. Here I have our potential divider circuit from earlier, and we have two separate resistors, resistor 1 and resistor 2, and I can physically change, take out resistor 1 and resistor 2, and swap it for the resistors that I want to get the voltage I want out from our input voltage. Whereas here we have the same thing, but just in one package. So essentially we have like a mini resistor 1 and resistor 2 in here. And so the resistance between A and B is essentially the resistor 1, and the resistance between B and C is like resistor 2. And when we adjust the dial, we're changing the resistance of between A and B and B and C. We've still got our fixed resistor and thermistor here. So on the diagram we have our fixed resistor as resistor 1 and then our thermistor is resistor 2, if I draw that in. So where are we? A is this red wire here, which is positive. B here is this purple wire here and that is where the voltage is going into our Arduino. C is this black wire which is ground. Let's plug in our potentiometer. I think I'm going to use this one. So I'll just pop that in here. Where the two resistors meet at B, I need to plug into the middle leg of my potentiometer here. So we can see where the two resistors meet here. So I need to plug this into the middle leg of my potentiometer, which I think is here. Now I can move the old thermistor and resistor. I'll just move that, sorry, there. I've just taken this resistor out, so A has now moved on my breadboard. So I need to plug that into this, into the third leg of my potentiometer, which I believe is just here. So now we should be done, so I can just adjust the voltage. And remember, the light should go on when the voltage is above 3 volts, I think. So let's go that. And it's above 3 volts, and the light is turned on. And hopefully you can see it moving when I turn the tension there. So it's going up. Turn it down. Remember, when it's below 3 volts, it turns off. So it's below 3 volts now, and it's turned off. So now we're going to go to the extremes, and so that should go between 0 volts and about 5 volts, because the Arduino is supplying about 5 volts, so I'm going all the way down, see if I can get to 0, yep, that's on 0, Let's see if I can go all the way up to 5 volts. Going up, going up, oh, the light's gone on. Oh, well, it's gone actually exactly 5 volts. I'm going to now use this potentiometer, and these legs are closer together, and here they're spaced apart, so I'll just have to adjust these um, wires, so let's do that. I'm going to unplug this and unplug this tension in and then I need to adjust the legs so this needs to go up one this needs to go up one and then we should be ready to rock and roll <laughs> so we're at one volt so I'm going to adjust it one way and it looks like we're going up in resistance sorry in voltage so I'm going to go and it's hit three volts so it's turned on keep going and we're now up to five volts so let's go the other way Remember, when it goes below 3 volts, the light should turn off, so it's turned off, and let's see if we can go to 0. Yay, we've gone to 0. Linear potentiometers act as you might expect. Let's say that we start at 0, so we haven't adjusted or turned the potentiometer at all, and we're at 0 volts. So, if we turn the potentiometer about a quarter of a turn, let's say that's represented by here, so when we get here, we've turned the potentiometer a quarter of a turn, 
And then let's just say that when we've done that, we've increased the voltage by two. So then if we did the same quarter turn after that, then you'd expect us to go up by the same amount, up to four volts. And that is what happens on a linear potentiometer. On a logarithmic potentiometer, if you adjust it by a quarter of a turn, remember this is the logarithmic potentiometer is represented with our blue line here. So you can see if we adjust it a quarter of a turn, we will have increased the voltage by half um, a volt. Remember this is just an example. So that is very different to the linear, which was two volts. It might not be clear where I got my half from, so I just thought I'd show you. So if we have here our quarter of a turn, if you trace it up to our linear line and you follow it across, you can see that we get two. And then if we look again at our quarter of a turn and follow it up, trace it up to where it meets our blue line, our logarithmic, and follow it across, you can see that's roughly half. I'm not drawing the lines in, but you can see if we do another quarter of a turn and we follow the line up to our logarithmic and we follow across, you can see that now it's about 2 volts. In the first turn, we increased by a half, and in the second turn, instead of increasing by a half, we got 2, which is increased by 1.5. And, and so if you imagined another quarter turn and you followed, traced it up, then you can see we roughly get about 5. So in the first quarter turn, we made a very small change in the output. And in the last quarter turn, we made a very large step in our output. I've replaced our linear potentiometer with a, log sorry, a logarithmic one. And so I've also attached a little arrow here so that we can visually see how much it turns. So I'm going to turn it now and see how far we have to turn it to get one volt. So I'm going to turn it. And we're almost there. Oh, that's close. Oh, that, that's about right. And you can see that's just under half a turn. I'm just going to see if I can get this to one. So I'll just adjust it a tiny bit. Ooh. Oh, that's dead on one. Okay, so that was roughly about just under half a turn to get one volt. Now I'm going to turn this to four volts so that we can see the change. Let's just see if we can get to exactly four volts. <gasps> exactly four volts and we're going to see I'm just going to put this arrow on here and we're going to see if we can see how much we have to turn to get from four volts to um, five volts if we can just... uh, sorry that uh, that'll have to do okay so remember earlier to get from zero to one took just under half a turn and since this is logarithmic and we're further on to get from four volts to five volts should be a lot less so let's test it out, so, okay, five volts, and that, I'm not even sure that's a quarter of a turn, that's probably, I mean it's a lot less than half a turn, probably about an eighth of a turn, so that's a lot less to get from four volts to five volts, one volt gap, than um, zero to one, which was over under half a turn. Well, why might we want to use a logarithmic potentiometer? Well, a lot of our senses, like our sight or hearing, is logarithmic. So that means we don't sense light or sound in a nice linear fashion, we sense it in a logarithmic way. So in our hearing, the difference between the quietest sound we can hear and the loudest sound we can hear is enormous. For example, our eardrums can detect a vibration of a width of an atom, which is tiny. If you are listening to the sound of some rustling leaves and a conversation, then you would notice that there was a difference in sound and that the conversation was louder. And we could call the difference of sound intensity and loudness X. Now, if you had something louder that you were listening to, such as a hairdryer, and you increased the sound intensity of that hairdryer by X, which is the same as the increase of sound as the rustling of leaves and the conversation, you wouldn't notice it. So in the smaller end of the scale, you would notice a small change in sound intensity or loudness. But on a larger scale, you need to increase the sound intensity more to notice it. If we were making a volume control or a dimmer switch, um, and we were using a linear potentiometer, then to us, on this side, um, it would seem very sensitive, so the smallest adjustment would, to us, seem to make a really large jump. 
Whereas on this end of the scale, it would make it wouldn't seem to do much. A massive turn seem wouldn't seem to do much to us. So that's why we'd use a logarithmic, so it would fit our the way that we perceive light and um, sound better. We have dealt with a fixed voltage coming in from either a battery or our Arduino. And then we've used our potential divider to get out the voltage, or reduce the voltage, to the voltage that we want. With a signal from a microphone or our guitar, for example, the voltage is changing all the time. So if we feed this into a potential divider, then we'll still get a reduced voltage. But that reduced voltage will be varying all the time, just like that signal. So when I say a good use of a potential divider is to attenuate a signal, then I mean that you just take this signal and you scale it down by a certain percentage. So here we've got a fixed voltage, but we could just feed this varied voltage into this. Thank you and well done for sticking around to the end of this video. And I really hope that you learned something new today, uh, even if it is just one thing. Um, if you did like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a good day. Bye.